There's Harry Potter fans watching you right now, so yeah. say hello. Fantastic, Nicky Cauldron. Um, Excellent. Cauldron. Hey, hey how's Cauldron. it going? Yeah, say, say hello, there's about hey. 2,500 people watching you right now. What's up, man? Hey. Yeah, nice little... Great. Hello, everybody. <laughs> nice to see you. How are you? No, it really feels like a different film this year. Um, the, the, the comedy, I think, is just way, way above where it used to be. Uh, you know, all the all the, the children actors are not children anymore. But my favorite, I mean, everyone's focusing very heavily on the romance side of things. But I actually, I, I prefer the fact that in this film you see a, a shift in Harry's character from having been a a, a kind of a, a, um, really a bystander in, in the series and in terms of what happens to Voldemort and it, he gets actually proactive. He starts to actually do something towards destroying Voldemort. This film, he becomes Dumbledore. Lieutenant in this film, and that's that's very exciting for me. There's still the darkness, there's still the intensity, there's still the jeopardy and danger, but it's all leavened by this kind of romantic comedy. And actually, it was really fun to do. It's so much more. I mean, they've always been great fun to work with. They've always been charming to be around. And what's happening is interesting. Outside in the real world, they're getting more insights into life. They're getting more bruises. They're getting more a sense of what it is to be grown up in a very complicated world and they bring all that to the set you know and that means that their performances get a little bit more nuanced but they're still great fun and they're really down to earth that's what I love about them I um you know what I don't see myself as having grown up on film as far as I'm concerned I've just grown up everyone else sees me as having grown up on film but my the moments where I grew up those actual moments when you notice there was a notable shift in the person that I am what are my own uh, they're not something that everyone knows about necessarily, they're, they are still my teenage years and my life and it's, it doesn't feel like, I, I still very much feel like I own them. It's, yeah, it's been strange, like I literally have grown up on screen, um, but you know, it's been the most amazing experience and totally unique and uh, you know, I'm thrilled to be part of something that's so successful and so loved, you know, I'm very lucky. I think. I think luckily it's happened for me now. I think it's been amazing to sort of develop this kind of, you know, strength and importance of the character. So, um, no, it's been really fun, really. I mean, I've learned probably more in this film and in the last film than I have in all of them, really. You were absolutely fantastic in this film. Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. Uh, I, I, it knocks me away. Thank you so much. I'm speechless. So thank you. Dan commented this morning that it was really something to come into the film, having not done much in the previous films, and give that kind of performance. Yeah, How was that for you? I mean, it is, it's very easy to bounce off these guys. I mean, they're, I mean, Daniel especially is 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 he's grown as such a good actor now that I I get intimidated when I'm acting against him because I feel like he's going to make me look terrible. But uh, he's he's very complimentary and very he's very easy to work with. Um, so it, it, it's a joy. It's nervous at first, but it, it's, it really is a joy and, and a privilege. Well, I, I think you see Hermione in this one. She's much more fragile, much more vulnerable. She she gets her heart broken. You know, Hermione has all of the answers when it comes to like school or you know anything else. And when it comes to love, she's a bit more. She doesn't have all the answers, so it's kind of it's sweet. Excellent. This is the first film that you filmed knowing the, the end, knowing how Harry yes. ends up. How did that affect? You, you know what, you just have to put all, all prior knowledge has to be absolutely expelled from your mind. I'm reading obviously when we were doing the sixth film, the seventh, you know, had come out, the seventh were going to come out. So I think, you know, you've got to sort of imagine that's not there in order to sort of make it realistic. I guess no one knows that, you know, their own destiny. So you've got to kind of imagine that what, you know, what happens doesn't happen and sort of be in the moment. Draco, he's found crying in a bathroom. He gets very emotional at the end. How did you avoid going into overacting? There. Wow, I like, I like that question. I never had that one before. Um, David Gates kept saying more, more, more. So I didn't, I didn't have much fear of I was going too far. I just think he wanted a bit, bit deeper. But he kept saying, you know, go, go that bit deeper. So uh, you know, I think we did about five or six, uh, ranging from sort of light to really heavy. And David just picked the one that he thought suited the scene the best. Yeah, and I, mean I get to play a tough guy, man. It's, it's not me. I'm not tough. This is brilliant. That's what's great about acting. You get to, you get to muck around and pretend. What was that? Dan said very funnily this morning that he hopes that you walk into your dorm room and see your face on a duvet. Yes. What will you do if that's the case? He thinks I'm crazy. He thinks I'm mad doing this whole A, university thing and B, sharing a room with someone. But I, I think it's, I, I'm excited. But um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Even if they do, it'll be, it'll be an adventure. It'll be fun. You dropped a hint today about the Ultimate Collector's Edition. Can you expand on that at all, their plans? Um, well, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're going to be keeping on, you know, um, keeping the 
quote unquote brand, you know, I don't think of it in those terms, frankly, but keeping keeping Potter alive. And, and there's so much stuff that we've got that um, I think will be of interest to the fans, whether it be, you know, screen tests uh, and things like that, that nobody has seen. And um, I mean, I looked at one the other day, you know, Dan's screen, Dan's screen test, and Rope and Emma's screen test. And, um, you know, one, I didn't recognize him. <laughs> But two, it was pretty moving, you know, to think way back when. So there's going to be a lot of really good jewels that we'll be able to share with people. Thank you so much. I get quite depressed at the thought that it's going to be, uh, you know, a couple of years left and then it's going to be over. But uh, yeah, it's a mixture of emotions. It's 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 really exciting the thought of what's going to, what's going to happen afterwards. But also it's a uh, it's a sad one to think that we're going to have to say goodbye. So it's a little strange actually coming to talk about six when we finished it, you know, several months ago, and we've been, we're 91 days into filming. Uh, the last two films, the last book. Uh, seven, fantastically. I, I really, I think we have a chance to do something extraordinary and different, which is no normally, in a big franchise of films, the last film can never live up to expectations. I genuinely think we can live up to expectations with the next two films. They're amazing. I mean, the second part of Seven is going to be 100 miles an hour, relentless. It is going to be extraordinary. It's going to be quite brutal to watch because it's just going to be non-stop information, action, emotion, everything. It's going to be a really fast, exhilarating film, I think. Well, in this, you know, in Seven, he becomes a pilgrim soldier, this kind of... I mean, he's also, like, there are some days where it's like, you know, some some moments in the seventh film where it, he becomes, like, this isolated, cut-off, lonely, paranoid figure. It's like the last days of a Roman emperor. He's just losing his mind and all of his followers are gradually dissipating around him. And, it, and it's, and it, you know, so I've been kind of, um, I don't know, I've just been... I don't know that there's been a specific preparation that I've been doing, but I certainly feel I'm a lot more inside his head than I have been in, in, in a while. I mean, in the previous films, you've kind of seen Ron, he's a bit of a wimp, really. He can't really, he's not really one to really rely on with all the heroics. But um, yeah, in this one, he, he kind of does step up and uh, he has his moments. So um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really pleased. He gets to be a bit of an action hero in Seven. Yeah, he does. He, he, it's good. I mean, uh, we haven't really done much of that yet, but. Um, it's good, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's a great film, yeah. I do, I just, they know when we've got a good take, because I'll jump up and down. When was the last time, like, for instance, film like seven, that that happened? It's happened quite a few times, actually. And I've been trying to not do it, because I worry it undermines my directorial authority. Do you know? Because when you see me bounce, it's kind of like, but I, I can't help it. I'm, I'm so, when they do something really interesting and, and affecting, I can't help but bounce. Yeah, that's it. They also commented this morning that uh, Emma said that they were really feeling the stress from the public about the kiss in Seven. How did you guys combat that? It's a big moment for both of them. It's a huge moment in a series of films. It's, you know, I love that relationship between Ron and Hermione. I love the fact that it's so repressed and trapped and unrequited and unfulfilled. And then we finally, in Seven Part Two, they get to snog. It was a really tricky day when we filmed it, you know, because they've grown up together in this series of films. It was like, you know, for Emma it was like kissing her brother, for Rupert like kissing his sister. So it was very, very tricky. And I just said, look guys, just give yourself to these characters. You know, let Ron take over, let Hermione take over. It's not Rupert Grint. It's not Emma Watson, it's, it's Ron and it's Hermione. And give yourself to those characters. Let them do the snogging. You shouldn't even think about it. And, uh, and it was a hell of a snog, I have to say. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. They did brilliantly. I was so proud of them. Yeah. There's like a battle raging around them for it as well. Oh, yeah, we're in the middle of a huge battle when they snog. Yeah, it's pretty intense. 